Hey guys, my name is Xander. I like to draw, and my favorite dinosaur is a Gryposaurus. My name is Bryson. I love paleontology, and my favorite dinosaur is a Spinosaurus. Hi, my name is David. I like to build, and my favorite dinosaur is a Dromaeosaurus. What's up, guys? My name is Roman. I like to play video games, and my favorite prehistoric reptile is a Dinosaurus. This is the Paleo Group. Paleo Grimosaurus. So, that's lunch. Really, dude? What? I'm hungry. Well, hello, everyone. It's been a very long time since we did episode two of Paleogrubosaurus. Um, as usual, I'm with my buddies, um, Roman, David, and Bryson. Say hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Hey. What's, what's up, people? Yeah, so, uh, man, it's great to be back with you guys again. And, man, it's been a long time since we did Paleogrubosaurus because... Yeah, six months. Yeah, six months. That's crazy. I, uh, I never think we wouldn't be that late, but yeah, six months was crazy. Busy, busy. You, you busy. tell me, man. Yeah. So, um, without being said, um, let's begin. And also, before we do that, um, guys, we thank you all for responding to like, um, doing like making a request video and um we managed to get two people who requested a two dinosaurs and um we'll see who chose the dinosaur so uh david let's start with you man go for it great so the dinosaur that i'm doing today is carcarodontosaurus ah interesting i always i was interested about that dinosaur Carcharodontosaurus is a carnivore that lived during the Cretaceous period over 97 million years ago. And it actually lived, it lived in the same area where Spinosaurus lived in northern Africa. Wow. Wow. The Carcharodontosaurus' is name means shark-toothed lizard because of the shark-like teeth in its mouth. And it's also in the same family as the Giganotosaurus, but it was about the same size as an adult T-Rex. Really, same size. So, like, is it like twelve feet in height? Because um, the T Rex is twelve feet in height. Uh, it, it seem like somewhere, uh, somewhere between in that. There are some sources where they say that the T Rex. Uh, actually, there are, are some sources where they say that the Carcharodontosaurus is taller. Hmm. Yo, I wonder who would win in a fight, Carcharodontosaurus or Giganotosaurus? Uh, I mean... Probably the Giga. I got Giga. I choose Giga. I mean, like, dude, the, the, I mean, dude, the Giga was way bigger in size, so that might give him the advantage. But listen, size don't matter. I'll tell you True. that. But, um... True. But it's just the main thing, their intelligence. I mean, Giganotosaurus was not very intelligent, but, like, yeah. It just depends on how strong their bite force is, and also, like, um... Yeah. Even the, even the T-Rex could, um, uh, beat the Jigga. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, even um... Even the Jigga being considered the biggest carnivore to walk the earth. Exactly. I am. And, uh, Actually, I'm pretty sure uh, Giganotosaurus might be the second biggest. Spina the title of largest man of largest land carnivore or belongs to Spinosaurus. Okay, that's yeah. true, but it was considered for some time. Yeah, that's 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 the sad truth. And Spinosaurus always gets this debunked so many times. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, uh, David, can you continue? Of course. Sweet. Um. A few facts about the Carcharodontosaurus is is that anything that it would that it would have preyed on, it actually would have been a major predator towards a young and old Spinosaurus. Basically, anything that it could um was uh, medium sized. Hmm. Nice. 
Dang, I'm surprised it can get the biggest carnivore of our, all time. Yeah. Or should I say the youngest, biggest carnivore of all time? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, is is that what you got, David? Uh, actually, there is a little bit more that I would like to talk about the Carcharodontosaurus. All right, then keep going. <laughs> so, the first Carcharodontosaurus fossils were were found by Charles uh, De Parrot and J. So uh, Saverman. I don't know how how these names are pronounced. Yeah, don't worry. You, you, I'll I'll take care of the editing and stuff. Okay, thanks. No problem. And um, they were the its fossils were found in North America in 1756. It was originally called Megalosaurus Saha. Saharicus, but its name was changed in 1831 by Ernest Stormer von Rich Chenbach. Rich Chenbach. I like that. Yeah. I don't know how, again, I don't know how these names are pronounced. Mm, I might do some research myself. And finally, for what I have on the on Carcharodontosaurus, is that it has a powerful well, bite force that was. Well, I wouldn't say higher than, but at least some, uh, but I'd say, hey, less than 3,000 pounds per square inch. Jeepers. Hey, if you got bit by that, you'd be done for. I mean, n no cap. No cap. Yeah, okay, we got to stop acting this. <laughs> okay, I should have said no, but whatever. Um, yeah, David, that, uh, thank you for this information. I... I actually like how the uh, Carcharodontosaurus, meaning shark tooth lizard, because because when I think about that, I think of like you know because the teeth look like sharks, and like yeah, there's a lot of shark attacks, and like you can understand how painful could that be with a shark bite. Fortunately, so, the only reason on why a shark would attack is because they were mistaken for natural but natural prey like uh, seals yeah and imagine being bitten by not a shark but the actual dinosaur and despite having a shark like teeth and with a bite force kind of like three thousand pounds that'll be way worse yeah you yeah you'll say goodbye to that but oh uh guys but do you have probably, oh. but from what i know if you want if you actually want to say i say like goodbye to your whole life you probably might want to uh, meet the tiger sheep, a uh, tiger shark, because based on size, their jaws are actually even stronger than the great white shark's jaws. Hey, do you guys want to know a funny story? What's up? Well, actually, one day back in 2019, I was fixing up my shelf, and there was a tiger shark jaw just sitting at the top of my shelf casually, and it got, and the shelf got hit, bumped into by me, and the shark jaw fell onto me, and I have a scar on my wrist because of that. Oh, jeez. And it was really oh. bad, bad and very bloody. Damn. Oh, that, oh guys, I, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, it was very scary for me. Worst well, ever. at least you're alive and you live to tell the tale. Yes. But, uh, oh, yeah, so, David, thanks again. Um, Roman and Bryson, do you guys have any favorites about the car or dinosaurus information? Yes, I love the fact that it used to have another name and it got changed. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the T-Rex. Yeah, and what about you, Roman? Uh, I just, I just like, love the fact that, like, it was a carnivore that was tough. You know, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a dinosaur that well, actually, was tough. Uh, but now that you mention it, Carcharodontosaurus was actually somewhere, it was actually somewhere in the same system of dinosaurs called hypercarnivores, which means like they eat a lot of meat. I mean, yes, I mean, wow. due to their big size, Great I mean, diet. they have to survive with, with mouth qualities of food. And like, I know that was like a poor, I know that was kind of a, yeah, I know that was kind of a, like a, like a, like a boring thing to say. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, Bryce, no, sorry, Roman, you're next. Let's see what you got, man. All right, so, 
Well, hold on. Just doing a quick little. Can you guys hear me well? Yes, we yes. can hear you. We heard you loud and clear. All right, cool. All right, cool. So the dinosaur I did was the NATO Ventilator. I don't know how to say it. It is the NATO Ventilator. NATO NATO Ventilator. I'm just going to pronounce it like that. NATO Venator. Say that again. NATO Venator. NATO Venator, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm good when it comes to dinosaur names, but when it comes to people's names, not so much. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. and also, too, guys, um, the people who are watching this, this is actually requested by, hope I'm saying this right, uh, Manigzoic Guy. So, Manigzoic Guy, if you're watching this video, um, thanks for your requests. All right. So, the uh, NATO Ventor was a carnivore that lived during the Cretaceous period. That and it lived over about seventy-two million years ago. Wow. Um, it was yeah, seventy-two million years ago. Um, it was discovered in Mon in Mongolia or Monjo or Monjo. Mon or Mon yeah. Um, its name means swimming thief because uh, its front limbs appeared somewhat flatted, perhaps as an adaption for for, for paddling and swimming. Um. It was a part of the dromaeosauride family, which means that it was a species like the like the dromaeosaurus, um, and in the same family as the and in the same family as the velociraptor. Ah, oh, interesting. Yes, they were and utahraptor. Yes, you were. Yes, you were all correct about those things. Wow. Um, also, uh, it was the NATO Ventor was different. From the Spinosaurus. Um, it was still a theropod dinosaur, um, meaning it would have used its two feet for running and also eat meat. But it was a bit smaller. Like, it was, like, if you, like, if you compare the two, this, 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 the, the Spinosaurus was large, but then the, 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 mate, but then the NATO Ventor was, like, small. It was very small, but it was... De but it was still a deadly carnivore. How um, small was it, though? Uh, I think it was. Um, I think it was about the same size as the Romanosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I okay. So, um, according to what I'm seeing, um. Yeah. Yeah, it's saying like it's about um, eighteen inches um, long in length. Eighteen um, inches—that's tiny. Like, oh my goodness, I've yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, and like the skull, like it was about like three inches. So that's that's what I got. So, um. Uh, uh, continue, uh, Roman. Um, yes, and the last fact about it, it was that it was discovered by Robin Sissons, a graduate student from the University of Alberta. Wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, he discovered the Little Ventures fossils and discovered it. And I think it was discovered last year, right? I believe so, because I remember hearing that recently a while back, and it was it was still all new to me. I didn't do some research properly, but yeah, I I believe it was new. Yeah. So, um, thank you. Who was the guy that uh, requested again? Who was the guy that requested? Medexoa guy. Medexoa guy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Medexoa guy. Um, that is a pretty cool dinosaur. Yeah. Um. I think it was Mesozoic guy. Oh, Mazixoric. My apologies. Sorry, uh, sorry, guys. I, I, I can't pronounce names well. Yeah, we all um, been there before, man. We all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Roman. For my thing, favorite thing about it, um, it's kind of interesting because that dinosaur is all new to me. But the one thing I'm realizing is that it is quite small than I thought about, like eighteen inches. That's like if you grab like um a subway. Like, you know, like average sub could be like, you know, the largest fan could be 12 inches. But if you made that sub by sandwich 18 inches and you hold it in your hand, 
That's like you're picking it up. Bro, since it was small, was it smaller than the Copy Technopus? I don't believe so. No, Copy is way uh, kind of smaller. Um, that dinosaur is a kind of a little bit bigger. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite fact about it is that it's a part of the Dromaeosaur family. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's always. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, raptor family in there. Or as I say, Dromaeosaur family. I think my favorite part about this dinosaur is, is that it's, a, it's also a semi aquatic dinosaur. Yeah, like the Spinosaurus. Yeah, uh, it was. It was very similar, but very different. It's so crazy. Yeah, that's that's kind of also fan I like, too. It's like kind of like the Spinosaurus. I'd say the dinosaur is probably somewhat similar to a penguin. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. But where was he found? Um, He was discovered in Mongolia. Oh, Mongolia. Sorry. Mongolia. Mongolia, yes. I don't know if that was a desert or a forest or a tundra type environment back then, because Earth has evolved a lot. Indeed, man, it actually does. I think that was a desert. I don't know. Uh, I know Mongolia is desert is today. Yeah, but uh, Roman, uh, thank you for your information. Um, very interesting. And all right, uh, Bryson, it's your turn. Okay, so the dinosaur that I will be talking about is the Acrocanthosaurus. Its name means high spine lizard because of its spiny um back, and it's really unique for that. It's known for the spines on its back. It's like similar to a Spinosaurus, actually. Except it has the body of a giganotosaurus. Hmm. Yeah, and its bite force was one ton, and it would feed on small dinosaurs like Teontosaurus, or sometimes it could possibly feed on sauropods. Interesting. It was uh, lived during the early Cretaceous period, about 97 million years ago, and it lived in North America. Wow. Wow. 97 million years ago. And in North America. Yes, yeah, North America. And 97 million years ago. Okay, so if I'm, hope I'm correctly, that's like, yeah, early Cretaceous period. Yep. Okay. Just, okay. Just want to be clear on that. Also, it was discovered by Sid Love in 1932. Wait, wait, you said Sid Love? Yep, Sid Love. What an interesting name. Yep. Hmm. And also, um, it was very similar size to the T. Rex and Spinosaurus, six, um, thirty-five feet in length, and it weighed six tons. Six. Six tons. Six tons. Wow, man, that is heavy. It is. That is one heavy dino. Yep. Yep. Uh, anything else, Bryson? No, that's about it. Well, uh, okay, um. Okay, let me think. So, my first thing about the Acrocanthosaurus and what you talk about, um, I actually really liked how like um this thing lived lived during the early Cretaceous because like something that big was starting to you know come along to the end of the dinosaur period. Exactly, like the late Cretaceous, you'd expect. Yeah, and that's also like the evolution of life. You know, first it, something will go small, then later on it will become big. Really big and then like kind of medium size. They just there's so many evolution stuff that happens. Exactly. They evolve to be giant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, what about you, Roman David? What's your favorite part? Uh, um, uh, do you want me to go first, David, or do you want to go first? Uh, I think I'll go first. There's something that really interests me about the Carcharodontus, about the Acrocanthosaurus. Well, um, from what I'm seeing right here, apparently Acrocanthosaurus is actually in the same family as Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. It, make, it makes sense because they are part of the same family. 
And they all look the same, basically. Yeah, yeah. since you said that Acrocanthosaurus had a similar appearance to Giganotosaurus, and from what I'm seeing in right here, it's a, it's kind of obvious that they're in the same family. Or at least yeah. that's just what, at least that's just my opinion. I agree with you. Yep. Um, my favorite part about it was um, that its bite force was one ton. Um, it weighed six tons. And the fact that it was a mix of the Spinosaurus and the Jigo. Um, because yeah. I think you said something about it having a spine, like a like a spine back, which is kind of similar to the Spinosaurus. And that it was so large, like it had a large body. That's what she I said. I think that was really cool as well. Another yeah. thing about the Acrocanthosaurus is that it was known as the Tyrannosaur of its time. Yeah. Wow. That's that's correct. That's that's true. If you know what I mean? Because Tyrannosaurus is the most fearsome carnivore to ever walk the earth. Indeed. So I guess you can say that during that during its time, it was the king of the dinosaurs. True. Yeah, but the king of the dinosaurs during the Jurassic period was the Allosaurus. Allosaurus. And then, Allosaurus. yeah. Oh, so, Bryson, I have one question about the uh, Acrocanthosaurus. What is it? Um, How big was it? Like, what was its size? Well, I don't know height, but the information I picked up was 35 feet and 6 tons. So, 35 feet, like, in length? Yeah. So, 35 feet, like, okay. So, uh, I could take a look at that right now. Um, acro, okay. okay, acro, acro canvasaurus, yeah, uh, size, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, height, uh, th th what I'm seeing it is 13, so either 13 or 12 feet in height. Dang, that's tall. Yeah, yeah, All, almost the same height as a T-Rex. How tall is T-Rex? We'll get that to later because, um, yeah. But also, uh, Bryson, uh, thanks again. Um, really no amazing. Wait, 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 Bryson. I have an, I have an, I have another question. Oh. So, so could the Acrocanthosaurus like? I know it could walk on two legs, but could it also run too? Yeah, it could actually run. Um, it could actually run pretty fast. I. I believe twenty miles per hour. Wow! Yeah, that running running that fast for a for a for a big for a big dinosaur impressive. Exactly. Yeah, actually, that's... from what I'm seeing here, um, it's it's top speed is actually twenty five five miles per hour, which is also forty kilometers per hour. But then again, who's counting? True. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was close enough. Yeah, and also like due to like the size maybe of this dinosaur, like it depends like the weight because you know weight can like make the thing go slow a bit. Like it's like whales, you know, their massive size and they move slow, but in water it's easy. I mean, of course they can swim. Hang on, but yeah, it just depends on how big the creature animal is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Bryson, uh, thanks again. Thank you for having me. Yep. All right, now it's, uh, my turn. Okay. Last, last part to talk about. So today, um, I'll be talking about the famous dinosaur, everyone, everyone heard about it, even, like, if you not know too many dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and... This was actually requested by my mom. So, mom, if you're listening to this podcast, I love you. And, okay, I guess I'll be a mama's boy now. Anyway, um, so, um, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, or T-Rex for short, names means Tyrant Lizard King because it was a can of the dinosaurs, of course. Um, the T-Rex lived in the United States towards the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. Um, the T-Rex was also a carnivore, preying upon nearly anything it could catch and kill. So the T-Rex was an apex predator, and probably ate hadrosaurs, ceratopsians, ankylosaurs, and possibly sauropods. Maybe like the juvenile sauropods? Possibly. Yeah. Um, 
Now, you may ask, guys, what makes a T-Rex the king? Like, this is actually quite more than what people expect. Of course, the T-Rex was obviously a huge pod, having a body length of 40 feet and 12 feet in height. But they're not just enormous. They happen to be the heaviest carnivorous dinosaurs. The T-Rex could reach up to 9 tons, and some of the largest specimens like Sue and Stan could reach up to 10. So just for reference, that's over 20,000 pounds. Wow, 20,000 pounds. That's a lot. Now, if you don't know, what, who is Sue and Stan? So Sue and Stan are both Tyrannosaurus, of course. And they were both names after the person who discovered the fossils of the two T-Rex specimens. Example, Sue was named after S Sue Hedrickson, discovered the dinosaur in 1990 during a commercial excavation trip north of Faith, South Dakota. And Stan was named after, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Stan Carnison or Carnison? I hope, I hope I'm saying it right. Or Sacaston, or Stan Sacaston. That's my two guesses. Um, he founded in 1987 in Hell Creek uh, Formation near the town of Buffalo, South Dakota. Um, the T-Rex Sue and Stan uh, stand out as widely renowned and remarkably preserved Tyrannosaurus fossils also re uh, retain among the largest specimens discovered. Moving on, the T-Rex have one of the most powerful bite force of any terrestrial animal, measuring it at over 20,000 pounds per square inch. They could crush steel. And guess what else is made out of steel, guys? What? A car. What? That's right. A T-Rex could crush a car. Wow. Due to his wow. massive bite force, it could crush a car. So if you see a T-Rex and go hide in a car... That's not great, man, because that, that could crush it. Unless you could just drive it off. You know what else is just like a car? Oh, no, what? what? Archelon. Oh, yeah, the Archelon. Okay. Yeah, because that's the same size as a car. Yeah, okay. so that brings me to think of, could a T-Rex possibly crush an Archelon? I mean, maybe. That could be, that's Alligators a good, that's... are known to crush turtles in their mouths, but what that's not really a big size what? difference between T-Rex and an Archelon. This is a serious mm -hmm. debate here, guys. Yes. I, I, I think it comes down to, like, where they're at. Like, if they're close to, like, an ocean or, or like, a lake, the, the Archelon has the way upper advantage because it could swim. But I don't think the T-Rex could swim. Could it swim? I don't I think so. Mm. But uh, I don't think it would dive. Um... Yeah, I think the Archon has the uh, has the upper advantage in that fight. But like, if they're on, I don't know about that because um, if you guys didn't know, the Archon actually had a leathery shell similar to a leatherback sea turtle. True. Hmm. True. Anderson. Um. Anyway, moving on. Um. Unlike most pheropods, the teeth of the T Rex were thick like a banana, acting more like a spike than a knife. Um. Wow. Yeah, and also their teeth are as big as bananas, of course. Um, oh, but Dino Dan before. yes, thanks to Dino Dan. Now, here this this part where it gets dark. The most terrifying feature is their brains. The T. Rex have one of the largest brains compared to body size for a dinosaur. Studies of the brain case show us that their eyesight and their smell were highly developed. And because of those brain scans, we assume they hunt similar to birds. So, the first skeleton of, of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was discovered in 1902 in Hell Creek, Montana, by the museum famous fossil hunter, Barn Brown. Six years later, uh, Barn Brown discovered a nearly complete T-Rex skeleton at Big Dry Creek, Montana. And the person who named it was given by American paleontologist, Henry Fairfield Osborne in 1905. And that's what I have. Great. Let's see, Xander, now that you mention it, the Bottom Brown did actually name name it before or Fairfield Osborne did. Yeah, it was that's... originally named Mandos Bondelis Jigis, which means giant porous vertebra. Yeah, I for mm. yeah, I actually forgot about that. Yeah, Mandos Bondelis. <laughs> 
Nick Fairfield Osborne uh, declined that name. For sure. Because, like, that sounds kind of ridiculous if you think about it. But, yeah. Well, um, I have, I have uh, two things. Um, one, um, so, like, you mentioned that the T-Rex, um, it's, it, like, uh, it's enemies king of the dinosaurs, right? Yes. But where did it, so, like, where did the name Tyrannosaurus Rex come from? Well, the name Sora and the name Dinosaur and Tyrannosaur means lizard, so that's one part. Tyranno meaning tyrant and Rex meaning king. Yeah. Yes. Because mm. I remember, like, when um, I remember I saw the episode down with Dana where, like, when Barnard Brown discovered it, he found a tooth that was big as his, his hand. So, like, inclusion, they'd never seen a dinosaur or anything before they discovered, and they want to make sure it's, like, a good legend. And today, the T-Rex, like, it's the most famous thing ever. Even if nobody knows anything about dinosaurs or isn't a big downer, they would know just the T-Rex by its name and looks. It's still meant to be the most commonly known dinosaur to this day. And, like, crazy thing, this thing appears in every single movie or show that evolves with dinosaurs. Like, it's... Like, uh, world. Yeah. Like this one person said in a movie I watched before, yeah. all the dinosaurs feel the T-Rex. Yeah, Walking with Dinosaurs, Dino Dan, um... There's a park, Jurassic of course. Jurassic World, Rexy. Yep. Camp Cretaceous. Yep. Um... Trying to think what else. Um, there's a lot of dinosaur movies. Um, there's one. Um, I mean, there was this V Rex from King Kong 2005, Peter Jackson. Oh man, imagine if that thing was real. I bet you he'd be the king of the dinosaurs. I mean, no, yeah, no kidding. Fast, agile, and very strong bite force. Yeah, yeah, and like, uh, here's the thing, too, guys. So, like, um, you may know, like, T-Rex, like, doesn't really roar in reality, right? Yep. So, like, the T-Rex, like, what I remember is that, like, I remember, like, someone scammed the brain of it and, like, had, like, a low vocalization. Like, you won't, I like... I wonder if it bellowed like an alligator. Probably, but what my best description I remember is that, like, you won't hear it, but you will feel it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, the thing also too, guys, I remembered, um, someone actually discovered a actual female T-Rex. Really? Yeah, I don't remember much of it, but, like, um, I forgot how, but I remember, like, they actually discovered a actual female T-Rex. Wow. So, like, also, for, like, Sue and Stan, um... Um, so I know that Sue, we were unknown what gender it is, but for Stan, I still don't know if it's a male or female, but it's still unknown because we can't tell how we're supposed to take a look at which gender, but like, yeah, I should have, I should have actually done research on that, but I, yeah, um, but yeah, that's, yeah, man, T-Rex is the famous one ever, like, huh. I mean it, guys. We all had that favorite dinosaur as a kid before, and it was a T-Rex from the start. I believe yeah. everyone had T-Rex as a favorite dinosaur, like, possibly everyone in this whole world. Yeah, and, like, T-Rex is my third favorite dinosaur. Spinosaurus will always be mine. Yep, yep. Quiversaurus is always my number one favorite. Nothing can be me. Um... But Xander, I, I, I think my favorite part about what you said is that uh, it had a massive bite force that was like 20,000. Uh, what do you say again? It was about like 20,000. Um, 12,000 pounds. Yeah. Newton, yeah. That was very cool. And the fact that it can crush a car, which most of which most dinosaurs can't do. Um, because the car is made of, you know, like, steel, metal, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that it could crush a car, like, that is insane. 
Yeah, if you're wondering sure. how, like, they discovered that, so, like, I, there was, like, a little documentary video, and, like, they made a T-Rex uh, skeleton, like, that's, like, a robotic mechanic, and, like, they test it out on the car, and it it's insane. Like, you'll be... My sh- friend, like, actually, at school, did that for a science project. Lucky. Yep. That's I'm, cool, man. Man, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. That'll be cool. We should do that. Do a little dino experiment. Sadly, I didn't get to see it. I think it was bad. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Buddy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, I, thought, I think it's cool about the T-Rex that its descendants are actually nano tyrannus or it's young i should say not descendants sorry oh yeah because like, there's like a little uh, little fear like um that nano tyrannus was uh juvenile and like yeah they're yeah i'm still trying to figure it out uh david what was your favorite part let me talk about the t-rex i about to say that my favorite part was about how uh, you're talking about sue and stan yeah, I mean, Sue and Stan, like, Sue is the most, like, recognizable T-Rex, but, like, Stan, I never heard about that T-Rex until I would watch a little video of someone explaining about Stan, and I thought it was pretty interesting, so I thought to mention that in this podcast. Actually, I have the um, skeletons of Sue and Stan in my dino field guide. Nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but man, it was so cool that we actually got some people that requested a dinosaur for what, us. Same. I'm excited that we got to get back on this call and yeah. come do the podcast again. Yeah. Wait, guys. Um. What's up? What's up, guys? Um. Since since we have been doing carnivores and uh, mar- and uh, marine reptiles, I think it'd be very cool if we talk about pterosaurs. You know, flying reptiles. Yeah, we should actually do that in our next episode. I'd be down to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might do that as well. Or depending. So, so, guys, if you guys have any requests of some pterosaurs we could do, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to talk about them as best as we can. Yep, indeed. Could, could be any pterosaur. And also, too, if you guys want, you could requests on any other prehistoric uh creatures dinosaur rain reptile or any other ones but uh yeah well i think it's around that time that this should uh be the end of this episode yeah i yeah i want to say uh thank you guys for joining this podcast it's been a while since we did episode two and i'm very glad we managed to have our own time to finish this it's always great to work with you guys. Yeah, it's, it's likewise, man. Likewise. And it's always great to talk to you guys once again and explain our, and talk about our paleontology stuff. Yes, great to have you guys. Yep. Anyways, yep. guys, um, this is Paleo Group of Source, and we'll see you all next time. Later, guys. Later. See you. Hang on.